On this episode of Star Trek Universe, we have seen Lower Decks 410, Old Friends, New Planets, and we're going to talk about it right after these words from our mystery sponsors. Welcome to Star Trek Universe, the podcast where you get to listen on two lifelong friends, sit and chat about Star Trek. My name is Matthew Carroll. I'm David C. Robertson. Well, tonight... We have about 20 minutes because yep. it's all we could fit in today. And then if we didn't talk today, we were not going to get to talk for like four more days. Mm-hmm. So let's, let's do this. Let's talk about this episode. What did you think? Um, I had my issues with it, but I thought it was good. And that was okay. Oh, yeah? I, I'm interested to hear your issues. I loved it. It's just, it this is my favorite kind of Lower Decks episode. Um, Lower Decks is able to do these great finales where there are just always these like, universe trotting like behind enemy lines while the other ship is doing it it always reminds me of the books i read as a kid where there's like Mm -hmm. something going on over here and and you know someone's trapped someone's trapped behind enemy lines someone else is working on a ship problem someone else is doing it it just sort of like all comes together and culminates into a great like you know decision that has to be made and I I, i love it now not to say that this was a great like decision episode i Mm -hmm. I would never for a second thought mariner was going to join him (laughs) yeah me either but i really just enjoyed the adventure of it and i think the way that this show builds toward a finale has gotten really good like I've, i've liked it every season but like this season i think is my favorite like build to a finale like nova fleet is now a thing you know like that's a thing that we know about in star trek and i think that's so cool Mm -hmm. um I, I just I really had a blast. I really really did. I I feel like you know one of my issues. Uh, well, first of all, let me just say that I loved the Rutherford Boimler argument about whether or not Lacarno looks like Tom Paris. That was basically yes. the joke I pitched last week. You look yep. like Tom Paris. I don't see it. Yep. So exactly, I, it was, I loved it was exactly it. one of the one of the options we came up with. And I, yeah, it's so it's it's perfect. It was perfect. Tone perfect. But I feel like Nova Fleet is dead. I feel like you know. That I, th- I feel like that all went by really quickly. Um, for there had to, to have been such a long build up to it over the course of the of the season, um, I feel like the Nick Lacarno Nova Fleet thing ha- was wrapped too quickly. I don't feel like it was very satisfying as an execution of climax. Like they'd been building up to it, and it just seemed too short. It would have made sense if it was more obviously him. Obviously, him grabbing lower deckers, like if he had the binars hacking uh, personal logs, finding out who was displeased in their uh, in their station in life, people who'd you know been right. screwed over, um, and that's kind of what they felt like. Yeah, well, they do. We, they have a they, thing where he they say like we can't attack because he went around as an ex Starfleet officer or like Starfleet cadet fomenting these insurrections on yeah. these ships. So they did like mention it, but it is definitely mm-hmm. like a 22 minute episode that tells a ton of story. Um, I could, I could have definitely dealt with like a two part finale or whatever. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Especially um, when you throw in the fact that they go visit Tindy's planet and have all that extra e- exposition to get yeah. the battleship. And I was like, man, th- this, this could be, uh, this could all stay on the, w- like I, what I love about it is how, it, you know, it's jumping back and forth between stories and they're all building toward a finale. Like I said, but like that happening makes that one story feel super rushed. Yeah. And I, I feel like I'm very interested to see what happens with Tendi because she said like going back is something she has to do for her. And I feel like that's mm-hmm. like, it seems like maybe she's saying, like, she's thinking, like, dude, my sister did us dirty, and honestly, I'm sick of Orion's being this way, because mm. she, cause Tindy was like, that's not all right, and her sister's like, yeah, that's very Orion-y. And I think, like, I think Tindy is going to be like, nope, I'm, I've just got to be the mistress of the Winter Constella- Constellation, and I'm going to take back Orion and make things right, maybe. That's what Tind- it feels like. Tindy's arc... Well, this doesn't make sense with like 31st century stuff, but maybe Tendi's art could end with her leading at least a group of Orion, since they're sort of a pirate people in different sects, mm-hmm. into the Federation. Yeah. Like joining the Federation. That would be a wonderful end to her arc. Like, 
um, if we need to spend the next season with her, like working on her people and like being the mistress, like she has to do it through the means they understand, like she did uh, when, like she does when she goes back home. Mm -hmm. I really, I mean, I love how much we've gotten to know about the Orion society purely through this show. Like it's so good. Yeah, I agree. Barter by combat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was nice. Yeah, um, it's great. I did enjoy the Migli Mo being used as the Cerritos champion because of his <laughs> allergy, or because of the other combatants' allergies. Best that was, allergies. It was, it was dumb, but it was cute. It was so dumb. So dumb and so cute. As this, Like, the, the silly jokes on this show... I don't know. I, like, I keep going back and forth because, you know, we've talked a lot about how, like, symptoms have a hard time with just the utter silliness of when Star Trek is utterly silly. Mm -hmm. um, like, letting it go. But, like, when they just do it in such a way that it's so over the top, I just can't help but love it. I really, like, I loved that. Yeah. And then the fact that he lost, too, was even funnier. Like, it was a good yeah. plan, but they still lost. By the way, I did love that they just tractor beamed that friggin uh battleship that dead battleship into yes. the shield that was dope i also liked the misdirect did you think that she was on it the captain um, was on it no i didn't if, i did um and i think they meant us to they, they they bring it and then they smash it in and he's on the bridge and boimler's boimler in the captain's chair how about mm -hmm. that for that a big cool. deal really cool it. acting captain boimler uh and he's in the chair, and you know that they're missing, and they're talking to them, and the only other ship we see is that ship. And so I thought they were over there, like, getting ready to fire on the shield or something, and then they uh -huh. crash. And for a second, I was like, wait, what? The, where, where's their mom? <laughs> yeah. Are they, are they, like, killing the whole senior staff? Like, what the – it, it turns out the captain's yacht, which was a great line, like – I've never even seen anyone use the captain's yacht. <laughs> yeah, it was a funny line, but I, I was like, oh, they didn't explain that they were going to be on the ship at all. So, like, I feel like a red herring, a Bruin. Mm, um, yeah. So, um, <laughs> I liked the look, man. I liked the Ferengi Genesis de device, and mostly yeah. only because Nick couldn't stop it without Latinum. That was the that was such a great moment. It's so good, <laughs> but like all of the all of the like hiding in the Mutara Nebula stuff, I'm like, it's too much Wrath of Khan. They had they had uh, James Horner music going in a lot of places. They were just they were doing exact mirrors of Wrath of Khan shots over and over yeah, again. They definitely were. Yeah, it's just too much. We reference Wrath of Khan too much in this damn franchise. It, Wrath of Khan has become Dick Donner's Superman. No one can get mm. over it. Everyone always references it. It's the, it's the shining moment for Star Trek for some reason. See, and I, I enjoy I, that I'm movie. So, I'm so shocked that you said you say this because, like, I know they had a few shots in there that were like specifically Wrath of Connie, but like the whole, I don't, I don't think the entire fight felt like Wrath of Khan. I thought it just felt like the thing you're always talking about, which is like they did the. It felt like a submarine battle all of a sudden. Yeah, but no, they were actually doing exact shots over were, and over yeah, again, yeah. back to back. Okay. And it's just like, there comes a point where it's just like, like with the koala. I love the koala, but enough with the damn koala. Stop referencing it. It's taking joy away from it now, for me. Interesting, because obviously you know that because you know Wrath of Khan so well. I yes. knew that they were definitely like... Like, I didn't recognize the music. I only recognized a couple of shots that I was like, I've seen that before. I think that's Wrath of Khan. Um, but, like, I didn't notice that they were doing it back to back. So, like, for me, it just felt like, oh, they're doing uh, what kind of what um, Strange New Worlds did last season with that, uh, mm -hmm. with the episode where they were dealing with the, the Gorn. Um, it, it, so, to me, it just felt like a, like using using space battles the way that you've talked about many times, wanting them to do. Yeah. Um, interesting that they did that directly, which I think I don't know. I, I, I'm surprised you hate it because it's kind of cool. I think that's really kind of cool. I mean, I don't hate it. I just like I kind of feel like they did the same thing in Picard to a certain degree to make us think that they were doing a certain thing. And I mean, they've they've referenced Wrath of Khan a lot on on in Lower Decks. They've referenced yeah. it so much in like the la and Nemesis. They it was just it's enough with the Wrath of Khan. Yes, we yeah. all love Wrath of Khan. Let's do yeah. new things. And yeah, but I mean, it's I just getting a bit much for me. I hear you. It's not a hate situation. It's just a, uh, okay. 
I, I hear you. I just feel like this show is constantly referential of other other Star Trek properties, and it's not always Wrath of Khan. Like you could say yeah. that. Uh, you could say that. Like the, it, it references Wrath of Khan a lot, and it's true because it's one of the most popular and favorites. But like they also reference a ton of other stuff. Yeah, it's, it's not, not just like Lower Decks, though. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like no, the it. franchise as a whole references Wrath of Khan too much. I hear you. I hear you. Um, but that's just my one of my little complaints i don't care yeah. like it's it's not a big deal they didn't bother me but partially because i didn't even really i didn't catch some of the references um uh i love that they showed a flashback getting to see young mariner acting like boimler basically yes like, and will Bo- wheaton and yeah yeah will they, wheaton. Brought, they had uh they had uh cedo as well um mm-hmm. I, think, I think i can't remember her name now shannon phil maybe yeah um that, that was yeah. really neat love that and we got to meet Josh, the guy who got killed <laughs> doing that doing that stunt in uh, oh, TNG. Oh, funny. Because he's already even, dead, but I, I didn't yeah. remember if you ever met him. That's funny. That's really funny. Um, <laughs> and he's like, I don't think this is good. We shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> no kidding, buddy. No oh, man. Yeah. I, <laughs> that, that sucks. Yeah, and there's a, there's a line uh, when Mariner, one of my favorite moments of the whole thing, I, I cracked up when he puts Mariner on the screen. It's like, tell him what you think of the uh, the whatever. And she's like, uh, <laughs> oh gosh, what did she say? I thought I had it written down, but I said, it doesn't look like I do. Was it, was it Nova Fleet sucks? Something like that. This guy sucks. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's what okay. it was. It's like this guy sucks. And then the next thing she says is, "He only cares about himself. He's gonna convince you all to join him and get yourself killed." Which is a real low blow. Like I yeah. mean, like ooh, she, that's a very direct reference to Nova, uh, Nova Flight, Nova what's Nova the Fleet, original? Nova Fleet. No, the original Nova. Oh, Nova Squadron. Nova Squadron, yeah, Nova Squadron. Um, and by the way, you, you say Nova Fleet's gone, and I think that's probably true. But you do have like this big fleet of ships that are like rogue ships, one of each. You know, like of these different people. Like you could definitely see some of them. They're not going to easily just be able to go back to their their homes. Mm-hmm. So if Nova, I could totally see lower decks continuing the Nova Fleet idea in some form. Like Nova Fleet continues even though Lacarno's gone or something. Like they even just do an episode where they deal with the fallout, you know? Is Lacarno gone though? Because I they don't know. Definitely set it up like and I don't love this idea that the planet that was created was uh mentioned as having uh Lacarno's DNA. Because <laughs> yeah. the original Genesis by that by, by that logic, the original Genesis planet would then partially be crafted with like DNA of Khan, and that didn't seem to matter much unless it was, you know, actually unstable because of Khan and not because David Marcus illegally used proto matter in the design matrix. Right. Yeah. You know, uh, it, it, now that you mention it, he has that like fiery temper, and those yeah. uh, those explosions kind of remind me of Khan a bit. Yeah. Yeah, and he was pretty <laughs> unstable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, like, yeah, they might do something else with Locarno. It, do- it definitely seems like they're setting something up. They're setting oh, something up with Locarno, uh, the the planet, but I, I guess mm-hmm. I-, I couldn't tell. Um, but I definitely think that planet, I mean, they even say, now we've got to deal with this new M-Class planet. So I'm assuming that's going to be the kickoff of next season, because they've, mm-hmm. done, they've done that every season. They've always kept the uh, track of what was going on at the end of last season and moved it, moved it forward a little bit. So, um, yeah. I just think it's cool. I think it's a cool episode and it did some cool world building and we got to see some old characters like in different light and uh, yeah, got to see Tindy like when she says, you've got this and like walks off camera and then like the camera turns is like looking out the window and turns into the credits, you know, Mm -hmm. that was a really cool moment. It was was really, really cool. It was cool. It was interrupted for me by an ad, but it was a cool moment. (laughs) Oh, that's terrible. What are they yeah. doing over there? I don't know. So my, by the way, well, I love the twining. I yes. love that the captain remains annoyed that it works. I thought you guys were getting along. No, only when we're twining. <laughs> <laughs> <Livic. laughs> um, my big issue, my biggest issue with the episode, the pretense that Mariner has only been self-sabotaging and acting weird for a few months. For the past few months, she says. Well, she has... I think it's, she says she's been acting weird the last few months, which she has like, she's always self sabotaged I don't think they're trying to say that, or even she's trying to say that, but she has been like literally trying to get herself killed lately. 
Remember like yeah. that, those last couple episodes? Yeah. I think that's what they're talking about when they say the last couple months or whatever. Yeah. I, you know, I'm just kind of like last few months. Cause she's always been like super self sabotaging and it kind of just felt disingenuous of the writers to me. It just kind of felt like they were trying to convince us of something that they want us to believe so that we'll think it's a better show. And I think the show's great. I just, you know, I'm like, marriage has been self-sabotaging this entire time. It felt weird. Well, she has been dealing with different things. Like, so she's been self-sabotaging for sure. But prior to this, it was like self-sabotaging from the sense of like, she doesn't want to get promoted. But mm-hmm. then like, it sort of slowly moving forward. Last season though, she did finally, or this season, I guess, she finally accepted the promotion and like, she's moved forward in her life in that way. And so like that, there's a little bit of movement in her character in the earlier parts, but now, now this is like a, she started like self-sabotaging to the point of endangering, endangering her life. And then like, it really had to come to a head and she had to change something, you know, except the promotion stuff. She, we found out the last episode, the promotion stuff was because of Cedo and because of her not wanting to have to make decisions that'll get her friends yeah. killed and stuff. So, yeah. And also sure. PTSD from the dominion war. That seems like all of that would way predate anything that happened the last few months. It just, it was a weird turn right. of phrase from her. Yeah. I, I think that, well, it's like, she. The, it'd be weird to also though. I think she's apologizing for the, putting her life in danger so much. I think it's what she's apologizing yep. for because like, it'd be weird to say, by the way, I apologize for my entire personality since you've known me. <laughs> it's like they're her friends, but lately her self-sabotage has reached a point of dangerous and they've been it, yeah. noticing it, you know? So like, I think there's, I think it makes sense that she said that, but yeah, it, I hear it might be weird, but it's probably also needed. No, Mariner's oh, kind of terrible. Apologizing for her self. Yeah, she's oh, kind of spe- terrible. Speaking of, I loved the line uh, from what's the what's the Vulcan's name? Fuck, Talin. Talin. That sounds right. Um, I love the line from I think it's Talin saying, uh, "Clearly, his emotional behavior conflicts with his culpability." Uh, mm-hmm. and then, uh, the the doctor says, "Yeah, he's an asshole." It's just really funny, like. <laughs> He's he's emotional in a direction that like pushes against his own culpability, which is such a like great way to say asshole. And she just like simplifies that, like yeah, that's basically all assholes. Like they won't admit when they do something wrong, and they just have big emotional reactions that don't admit their own. It's just a great line. I I loved the bit where he announces for the like that they are doing this independent fleet for the first time ever. And then like Bumler's like, <laughs> oh, the Maquis would like a word. Yeah. The whole, like, I really like that um, Rutherford and Boimler have become like the, what is it? Stratford and Waldorf of the like view screen. Where the, the two Muppet guys. Oh, the old Muppet guy. Yeah. The okay. old Muppet guys. They're like sitting there watching the screen and like roasting the view screen, like kind of just as uh-huh. asides to each other. And I think the idea is like, they're not really being heard by anyone, but the two of them, you know, they keep saying these like really funny lines just back and forth. And I thought that was seeing them getting to do that. Like on, on a mission was really fun. Yeah, that was, that was great. Oh man, I loved it so much when she uh, sat down and took over that ship with Carol's codes. <laughs> that was cool. I dug. Yeah, she's like, I knew this would come in handy one day. <laughs> that was good, and I really enjoyed. For whatever reason, I enjoyed the chemistry between her and the Genesis device. Like just this dead yes. device sitting next yes. to her, and she's like, she personifies it by calling it GD. I didn't even and notice that she was that she said GD over and over the first time I heard, saw it, and like that's so funny. And she says it with like girl, like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's like he's obsessed with you, girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> the, the whole Genesis device being personified was really funny. <laughs> yeah, and I liked the like the pursuit before the Mutari Nebula, M- Mutara Nebula stuff. Like when she's like, "Ooh, planet debris." Or a space debris oh, or whatever, so it's and a was hiding line. all that. That was all great. That's so good. It's like every sci-fi space adventure ever. Like we got to go into the dangerous debris that no one should go in because it'll be 
like good for good for getting away from these guys but like mm-hmm. it's always it's a terrible idea it's just like a luck based thing but they do it in every movie and so her just calling out ooh dangerous and unpredictable space space debris <laughs> yeah I dug it I dug it I, I like that she knew so many Federation I mean so many Ferengi rules of acquisition she only listed two but definitely seemed like she had more oh, of her oh yeah I think we've repertoire. seen her I think we've seen her quote them before like when she was yeah. in Quarks or whatever um yeah, for sure. Um, I really liked, how do I look? Confident, but you know, in a creepy way. It's exactly what I'm going for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they have like the same face. I don't see it. <laughs> yeah. I was down. I liked it. Fucking Romulans. <laughs> like... <laughs> I just like the uh, the bleeped out fucking Romulans. Like, you just don't get like just, just you don't get the f word very often on Star Trek, and so it's just really funny. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, the, uh, yeah, I liked the "We are free to lurk" or whatever it was, or scheme or whatever it was they said. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can be free to free to. <laughs> we we are free to scheme, do our own scheming or whatever like that. I don't know. Yeah. Cool. It's good stuff. I like that she tried to convince the the people, but it didn't work at all. She just ended up having to fight it all out. It's fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. Badgie showed up. Goodie. Or Goodie. Goodie. This is Goodie. Goodie. Yeah, we had... We, they did really wrap a, a lot of stuff up well in a lot of ways on this... In this episode. Yeah, totally. Um, I, And, like, you know, seeing her at the end... Like, as if she's gone to therapy for a while and, and having all this. I've really been processing of stuff, guys. I'm really sorry, but that whole conversation was really nice. And I loved how Boimler just seemed uncomfortable. And then she says, let's get drunk. And he goes, there she is. Whew. Yeah. <laughs> it also shows that even though she's uh, had some personal growth, she's still a mariner and she's still going to be a little uh, wild or whatever. Um, yeah. Uh, I. Uh, I don't know. I felt like that was sort of like maybe in just a joking sense, maybe it won't go further, but it was like, you know how friends can like be kind of toxic and not want you to grow because they want, they selfishly want you to stay the same. Yeah. A hundred percent. And and I I definitely think that's in there. Uh, We we had someone write in earlier this season saying that like, it's weird that Boimler has been on so little this season. And I think that's probably true. Like, I think it's probably true that he's like busy with other shows and he's just, he hasn't, I don't think he's been like the primary character of any of the episodes this Mm -hmm. season. Um, and so, especially with the finale, like barely having him in it, uh, I mean, he's in it, but like, he's not, he's not over there with Mariner or whatever, like almost every other big mission like this, he's always in the middle of it in most seasons. And I like that this season got us some breathing room to really, we, I feel like we learned more about Tindy and Mariner than we have. Um, definitely Tindy. And then Mariner really got a chance to be the star of the finale, which was really cool. And we've learned more about Rutherford too. I feel like they, they were Brad Boimler heavy, yeah, for sure. For a, I, a while. I agree. Uh, he was kind of the main character, sort of our, our eyes into what was going on, but like it doesn't feel that way anymore, which I really like. I like the collaborative, uh, whatever it's called, when you have more than one character as the head. Yeah, I know what you mean. You know that word I'm looking I, for? Uh, ensemble. Ensemble. Thank you. Thank you. That was it. Okay. Um, I got to go. Yeah. I, I have to go uh, do another podcast. Uh, unfortunately, we we tried to record early this morning. That didn't work out. Then I tried this afternoon. My my niece was sick today, and I had to take her to the doctor. But we went to four different doctors' offices in different parts of Birmingham. That like, it's the first time going to the doctor in town and tricked finding an urgent care that would like take her insurance and had the strep test and had the it's just like I drove all over town and finally got her to a doctor um, and got her some medicine. Ah. So I'm glad we got to do this though. I'm really, really didn't want to wait to talk about it. So yeah, we've got a fair amount of feedback. So. Yeah. So we're going to, we're going to come back later this week with a, uh, with a feedback episode. So hit us up with your feedback, Star Trek, yep. Ucast at gmail.com. And we'll do uh, as long a feedback episode as you want. Uh, just as you send it in, we'll talk about it. And, um, you know, all that good stuff. I am going to go watch Loki. Pretty excited about it. Thought you had another podcast, man. Well, that's what I got to do. I watch Loki and then podcast about it. 
Lies, lies, lies. What? I got a podcast at nine, so I got an hour to watch Loki. All right, Whatever, guys. Man. Much love to you guys. Jolan True. Live long and prosper. Thank you for listening to the Star Trek Universe Podcast, a Stranded Panda production. If you'd like to hear more from David C. Robertson, check out the DC On Screen Podcast or maladjusted.tv for his web videos. If you'd like to hear more from Matthew Carroll, check out the Marvel Cinematic Universe Podcast or listen to his music. Just search for Matthew Carroll anywhere you get music. 